There goes Michael Burney, the sweetest of sweet music to get this show underway yet again. Who are we brought to you by? Orgoretro.com. Use the oh. promo code our game and you get 15% off. Ah, there's some gear, aren't they? Look at uh, it. Savage, I can just look. I think I got this for Christmas last year. I think I've gotten one every year. My father nearly threw me out of the house one Christmas day when I landed in with a Kerry jersey. The hatred of Kerry from the 70s and 80s is coming, back, coming home to roost again. But yeah, the best of gear every county covered. Uh, and I know uh, I know David from Argo Retro has a lot of the, the jerseys up just like those ones there. And the WJ Dolan from Tyrone and all the, all the absolutely classic jerseys there. But yeah, use the promo code to get 15% off. If you're stuck for a Christmas present, there's only one place to go. Absolutely. Um, there was a huge amount of stuff going on over the weekend. We're going to come to all the matches. I mean, you and I were both there to watch Ballyhale Shamrocks beat Bally Gunner. Before that, Dunloy with a thrilling win over St. Thomas's. There was obviously the Camogie All-Ireland on, uh, on Saturday and plenty of other little bits of news in between as well. But um, interesting bit of news, I, I would have thought, with Park Maher being named as the tip Turl of Sarsfield's manager. What did you make of this one? Just even like he's 33 years of age, turns 34 in February. Quite young to be a manager, having not stepped away all that long ago. And even when he was initially asked, would you go down the coaching road and all that? I suppose it was so soon after his retirement that he hadn't really thought about it. But here we are. Yeah, and like he's obviously a selector with, with Tipperary next year as well, which is going to take an awful lot of his time. Uh, I'd say he'd be in the field every night of the week, uh, realistically. The se- I'd say he'd be covered nearly for the seven days between between club and county. Uh, Turner Sars obviously didn't want to lose him. Uh, and wanted obviously unfortunately lost him as a player, but obviously mm. wanted to hold wanted to hold on to him in that capacity, and they have now. But uh, he's going to be a busy man. I thought maybe potentially he would work with Tipperary for a couple of years, and then maybe go from you know coaching and being a selector to to management. But uh, they've obviously like Turles are looking to get back on top as well. Um, a few more passionate than Paddy. I'm sure he'd bring in maybe uh, a coach and some other expertise around him. But it's definitely an interesting one. Uh, He's like she has to be one of the youngest managers out there, realistically. When you look at it from an age profile, I remember Emmett McDonald was awfully manager in his early thirties. Yeah, Davy Burke that. obviously. Davy Burke uh, is still very young and was the youngest inter county manager. Wasn't John uh, Mahon twenty eight or something like that? Yeah, when he finished, when he started with Clare in in uh, you know the early nineties. Yeah, it's funny. It's a funny one, but uh, listen, he knows the play. He knows the players inside out. Um, I'm sure he'll have, uh, he'd probably call on some of his uh, relatives who've been heavily involved there. I think Paddy McCormick is uh, closely related to him as well, who managed them obviously to county titles recently. So I'm sure he'll bring in a very good team around him. He's going to probably need a team with Turles to, you know, manage things maybe while he's caught with, with Tipperary a bit as well. But uh, like he's got, uh, he's got fairly good links. Cyril was, Cyril Farrell was younger than a good few of the players on the yeah. squad in uh, when they won their first All-Ireland in 80. I think the Connollys were, were older than him. It's, that's a mad one. He went to college with them all in, in uh, UCG, as it was called back in the day. Um, but yeah, like, listen, um, his career has finished, unfortunately, and had been forced to stop way earlier than any of us wanted. But there's a, looks like there's a clear path into management now. And he, uh, I, I think from, from his own point of view and what he can bring to Tipperary, it'll bring an extra, um, I think he put an extra feather in his cap because the amount of league games he's going to see where it's the non-county lads. So he'll obviously do Tipperary training and he'll see all the, you know, the, the guys who are currently considered the elite and then the rest of the week or, or whatever, he'll see some of the other lads that are coming or potentially aren't on the radar just yet. You just never know who he'd pick up that way. Um, another thing, I suppose, is another small bit of Tipperary news is a foundation is set up in the, um, in the memory of late Tipperary hurler Dylan Quirk has already raised almost €35,000. Uh, obviously, you know, it's, 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 you know, brilliant really that, uh, that something good is coming off the back of something so terrible. Um, run by his parents, Dan and Hazel, and his sisters, Kelly and Shannon, the foundation plans to screen GA players for sudden adult death syndrome. And a GoFundMe page has been, uh, has been set up to raise awareness on that. So I think that's great. Really is great. Um, you know, I was just reading their interview with, with Neve Horn in the Sunday Independent yesterday. It was unbelievably honest. It was quite raw, like really raw to, to be reading it back and kind of rel- reliving history. But like only four months, months were removed. They're obviously intent on, he's, he has a, he's going to, he's left a massive legacy already, but they're intent on, I suppose, helping uh, a lot of other GA players from the ages of 12 up and get, get them screened and see if they can prevent prevent um you know these type of instances happening again in the future but um 
yeah, I thought it was very, very, it's very brave and kind of noble thing for them to do because they're obviously dealing with their own grief even at the moment as well. But they're trying to help a lot of other people, and no doubt they will. Yeah, and Richard Hogan says, I wonder if Paddy will give Marcelo Bielsa a call to help him out with the Sars. So yeah, Paddy's definitely a big Leeds United supporter. And I think Marcelo Bielsa is unattached after getting the boot by Leeds there at, towards the tail end of last season. But I'm not quite sure we'll see him inside in the good field in Thurles, will we? I would I wouldn't think so. It'd be interesting to see. Um we actually played under Brendan Bugler this year. We did a a, a murder ball style drill uh, that was similar to what Bielsa used to do. It was just bang, 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 bang. Uh, they, I think they practiced it in training the whole time. Oh, thing. so there's no breaks as soon as the ball goes out, another one's thrown in. Like yeah. straight away, yeah. It was highly, highly intense. But uh yeah, it'd be interesting to see if I don't I don't know if Bielsa is going to be calling over, even though I'm sure he could he could offer plenty plenty to him from a managerial point of view. But uh yeah, fascinating fascinating time for Potty going forward and for SARS. Yeah. Um Jimmy, Jimmy Barry Murphy has been inducted into the RTE Sports uh, Hall of Fame. So no surprise there, sure. If uh, if Roy Keane is giving him the big one on TV on Sky Sports, sure look at why wouldn't RTE be following suit? Uh let's get to the matches, will we? I mean Ah yeah, I think so. Just on JBM as well, like JBM is such a, an understated legend. It, like he, he doesn't, he would never big himself up. I remember. You wouldn't do interviews. No, uh, no. I remember Derek Foley uh, from the Star. It was hilarious. Uh, oh yeah. I... J, J, JBM was um was been inducted into the Crow Park Foot Hall of Fame, and he was doing an interview. It was in the the auditorium uh, over the Cusack stand side. And Derek is the Derek's like brilliant. Like would always like to trying to make comparisons with maybe a rock star or something like that. But he compared Jimmy Barry to George Best and you know like flowing flowing hair and all this kind of thing and like Jimmy Barry like he literally didn't didn't know what to say like he'd be the he'd be the anti-hero in a way like he would not want to be building himself up at all not not in any way but like that that goal he got there you know everyone talks about Fenton's uh, goal off the ground uh, against Limerick which was unbelievable but the time Fenton drilled that ball in mm. and Jimmy Barry got that flick that the camera couldn't even catch the first time like to me that's one of the greatest goals of all time. Like it was that quick, the camera couldn't even catch it. It's a shame we didn't have HD for that. You know that uh, that show, the game that was on RT a few years ago, and they got Ozzy's uh, brilliant goal against Cork in slow mo. Imagine if you mm. had uh, JBM's goal; that'd be unreal. Uh, we we'll go through a few comments here. Uh, look, just first off, the the scoreline between Bally Hale and Bally Gunner was one sixteen to sixteen points. Um, was a couple of penalties in the space of a minute for um for Bally Hale and TJ Reid blasted in one of them and Stephen O'Keefe who had an unbelievable game and made so many brilliant saves uh, he stopped the other one unbelievable into the top corner actually I haven't seen a replay of it yet I'm I was I thought that TJ was protesting afterwards because maybe he felt that it was saved and it hit sort of the inner frame of the goal and came back out and I was half wondering the same at the time. But I, I haven't seen a good replay yet to tell me definitively one way or the other. In the TG Carr interview after the game, he actually laughed and was like, yeah, definitely, it was definitely in. And he also brilliantly called Stephen O'Keefe Socky, he called him Socks, which I thought, <laughs> which I thought, which I thought was that. Like, I got a right chuckle out of that now, I have to say. But um, And it was funny, he said he was actually looking to hit it a bit lower and it went higher than he would have wanted. And the second Harry Kane said the same last week. <laughs> that's true but it's funny he did put both across the keeper he made O'Keefe have to make the save across his body thought that I, I'd have fell onto me on Twitter I put up the video of the save and he just said it was straight at him if that was straight if the first one was straight at him I, I, I don't know what I don't know what you're looking at um, it was an unbelievable save um, and somehow the ball managed to stay in play for the guts of about three minutes it never went out of play so it went from O'Keefe saving a penalty then clearing it to a couple of different plays where the ball hadn't stopped to them earning another penalty when Shane O'Sullivan hacked down TJ to uh, you know another goal. But um, uh, O'Keefe was unbelievable. He was one of the best goalkeeping displays I've seen in many, many years. And that was just like a couple of minutes after Evan Shefflin burst forward from wing back and had a goal chance as well that was uh, that was saved. Owen Cody had put him through. But um, we'll go through a couple of the comments here. I mean, I think Bally Hale were fully deserving of the win, no doubt about that. Uh, Joey Holden was excellent yesterday, says Cash is King. Far from spectacular with anything he does compared to Dahi Burke, for example. Paddy Mullen was excellent also. Adrian improved things in midfield there with his move in the second half as well. Killian Corcoran is also developing very well. Great young find. Like, he's still playing with uh, with uh, Kieran's. Like, so that'll tell you how young he was. So to have a clash of himself and Paddy Fitzgerald, that was a, a pretty tasty clash there. Um, I suppose just broadly, well, Park Grace says, couldn't believe majority of pundits made Gunners' favourite. Ballyhale, best club team of all time. Scoreline flattered Gunners. I will say, though, for about 40 minutes, 
to me, well, less than 40 minutes, I was thinking Bally Gunner had this kind of in hand. Like, fair enough, they've gotten away with a few goal mouth scrambles and Saki has pulled them, Socks has pulled them out of the bag once or twice. But I still kind of felt like Bally Gunner are going to come here. And then ultimately they didn't, and Bally Hale took over. And yeah, I think they've proved a few people wrong because, broadly speaking, I'd say Bally Gunner were people's favourites. Just on that, Shane, like Bally Gunner were 11 9 up just before the break, just on, to piggyback on what you're saying then. On yeah. there, the Park Mahoney dropped a free short, and Connor Sheaton hit a wide. Uh, Bally Hale ended up going in, Bally Hale ended up going in level, right? Yeah, uh, they could Bally, like Bally Gunner could have been you know two to three up, shall we say. Then at the start of the second half, Park Mahoney dropped on wide, Fitzgerald was blocked down, shooting over his shoulder. Peter Hogan, Mikey Mahoney. Had really, yeah, Peter Hogan had a really harmless wide at the start of the second half, and Mikey Mahoney as well. So that period there where you're thinking it was the same in, for an appearance against Bally Gunner, actually, they were five up a half time, should have been seven up, should have probably actually been nine up with the two that were dropped short at the start of the second half. And then all of a sudden, the game changes. It just shows you, like, against the really big, big hitters, when your chances are there to go four or five up or whatever it is, you really need to take them. Uh, and to be fair to Bally Hale, they just squeezed them, really, really squeezed them, really upped it physically. I tell you what I love from the game yesterday as well. For all the talk of, you know, the uh, uh, Bally Hale been on a revenge mission and the bit of needle between the two of them, like there wasn't a bad blow in the game, really. Like it was real, it was real uh, manly stuff, like really. You know, there was no, there was not, not, no strokes off the ball. I know there was a couple of cynical tackles. Um, there definitely was, but like, that's not to say that that's not manly. I think he's probably just been smart and playing within the rules at the moment. But there was no, you know, there was no ill blows between them. It was just two teams going at it, absolutely hammering tongs. And had Sox not pulled off four or five unbelievable saves, I think we're going to Sox is going to get over now. By the way, yeah. it's, it's working now. Yeah, had he not pulled off four or five unbelievable saves, um, you know they would have been out of sight. There's no point in saying any different. Uh, Bally Hale would have been. Yeah, and do you know I was doing my stats afterwards, and I had it down as eight goal chances to one. And that kind of, and even the one that Bally Gunner had was Desi Hutchinson probably forcing a chance from maybe twenty five yards out. Great save by uh, Dean Mason. And I suppose after you know that late goal in the All Ireland final, the fact that he was able to come up with a save like that, even though you'd probably slightly expect him to make it, still great for him as well heading into heading into the All Ireland final. And I know you're saying that there wasn't really any dirty strokes, and Jesus, we'll come on to it later on. But Conor Cooney's rugby tackle in the in the first game was quite something. But um, yeah, I agree with you. Like Bally Gunner just left too many shots behind him, too many shots on the on the tee coming into half time. I have a yeah. really unusual stuff for them. Like they're so efficient normally. It was strange for them. Like yeah, like it's so. I'm looking at it. So a, a shot drop short, twenty nine minute, thirty eight minute wide, thirty second minute wide, thirty uh, third minute block, and then three at the start of the second half as well. So you're looking at seven missed chances in a row completely turned the game around. Uh, I'll just go through a few more comments and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, Camogie final uh, Saturday was a great game, far more enjoyable than any of the inter-county finals during the last decade. A great weekend for with Tourine, says Joe Butler, winning the intermediate semi-final in Ballyhale, doing the business in Croke Park. Missed out in a great World Cup final, but I could not make three of myself. By the way, did you, uh, did you catch any of the... Oh no, sure, we were watching the extra time of the World Cup final after the match in Croke Park. I have to be honest, this was a massive own goal from the GA, really, wasn't it, to have this on at the same time? Why could we not have played the Ballygunner Bally Hale match uh, in Wexford Park, Port Leash, Tullamore on, sa- on Sunday, Saturday evening, or even like slightly move forward the times of the Camogie finals that were on on Saturday and, you know, wedge in the, the Hurland final as well? I know teams are like sports, you know, the women have to have their day, the men have to have their day, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, what a massive own goal from the GA because this was such an anticipated game. And for more or less it to pass by unseen because we had the greatest World Cup final of all time. I mean, you know, it's shooting itself in the foot. Surely FIFA could have moved the soccer back to five o'clock. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, like we knew we knew probably years in advance that this was going to be the case. Uh, they could have played both games at, at one, both semi-finals at one o'clock or half one in separate venues, which has been done regularly up until recent years. Uh, I just think, like, listen, everyone that was there at the game yesterday, the few that were there, because there was only a couple of thousand there. Let's call it a spade a spade. Like Crow Park was as good as empty. What was, you know, was there one twentieth of the capacity in Crow Park yesterday? Pro- probably, probably not. Um, so I do, I do think it was a massive own goal, and everybody that was at the game and everybody that watches the game, like they're generally 
like GA fans are sports fans. So- Soccer World Cup comes around once every four years. The chance for Messi to do what he did yesterday comes around really once in a lifetime. So I just think, yeah, like we're trying to get eyes, as many eyes as possible on the club game. We just think we just shot ourselves in the foot completely in this instance. We could add the, we could have had Bally Hale and Bally Gunner as, you know, the pre-appetizer to the Soccer World Cup. And I'm not saying we have to bow to soccer or other sports. That's not bowing to them. That's just being smart and it's maximizing your audience. And we didn't do that yesterday and it's a shame. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Joe Butler adds, Bally Hale did really well after losing two other key players with injury early in the first half. Darren Mullen is so unlucky with injuries over the past three years. Hopefully he'll be okay for the final. And then uh, also it was uh, Joey Cuddy who went off injured before half time. So like, that's uh, take that's absorbing some serious losses, digging into your panel and still being able to pull it out of the bag. But it, it is just that goal threat. I mean, it's and obviously Colin Fenley finished the game with just a point, but he's just he's so, so dangerous. And I think you could like, is it fair to say that Barry Coughlin, who you know he's a fine fullback and has had some great games, but he just did seem a couple of times when he was spilling ball with Colin Fenley chasing him seemed a little bit spooked and I mean I'm not trying to put the man down because I think he's an excellent player but just seemed a small bit spooked by Colin Fenley chasing after him maybe I think he started the first ball he went out there and he lost it and I think Bally Hale ended up winning a free it was in that early kind of frenzy yeah uh, and balls that he would generally be comfortable enough on he just couldn't couldn't get the grips with like listen it's probably the conditions the cold maybe something to do with it as well maybe also the fact that you know Probably one of Barry Coughlin's toughest days ever in a Waterford shirt was that day Colin Fenley gave him a good bit of trouble in Turles in that replay at semi-final 2016. 2016. Yeah. So, like, maybe that had something to, to do with it as well. There was a nice thing at the end of the game, actually, where Colin Fenley, Tomas McCarthy from the Waterford News and Star actually pointed out to me, Colin Fenley and Barry Coughlin were kind of chatting on the pitch after. It looked like, you know, whatever you know, who had or was before the game. And sure, Barry was saying to him that he meant no disrespect. And to me, I look back at the speech a couple of times during the week. I don't, I didn't think there was any disrespect out of it at all. But listen, Bally Hale, as I listened to Pat Hoban after, they were looking for any cause that they could find. And they found a few of them yesterday. Also, just listen to some of them after. Um, it really sounds like they, I know this might sound a bit silly. It really sounds like they went after this game mentally more than anything else. Uh, and I'd heard that they put a, like huge work into the past couple of weeks, but not necessarily physically. It was more to do with mentally how they were going to break down Bally Gunner, mentally getting over the scars of last February. Uh, TJ alluded to it. Uh, Joey Holden alluded to it after. Uh, and I just think that's kind of fascinating that there was probably a bit, maybe a bit of a mental block that they needed to get over. But like they, they overcame it in such spectacular fashion in those last four or five minutes where, you, you were thinking maybe Bally Gunner were going to score a goal, but it never really looked like they were going to get a goal. If you get me, there was a real shutout mm. uh, put in front of them. Yeah, and like I would have heard that there's very, there was very little coming out of the Bally Hale camp in the last few weeks. Obviously, Colin Finley talking about that speech and you know disrespect. If you want to look at it that way, I'd say there was a real siege mentality being built up, and you know this is something that Kilkenny did for years. You know when they were winning title after title with um, Kilkenny under Cody that. Um, you know, they were talking about everyone wrote us off when, in fact, everyone said you're going to coast to the All-Ireland and they duly did. But um, a, a switch that I want to point out is, I mean, Ronan Corcoran came back in. He'd been, you know, suffering with injury lately. I presume he wasn't at 100% because Conor Sheehan was, you know, very, very influential at the start of the game. But bringing Adrian Mullen, as was mentioned, I think, by Joe Butler in his comment there earlier on, bringing him out to midfield. And at times he was in his own half. I mean, he's, he's some athlete these days. And he's not afraid to throw his body about either. So you know, if there's lads looking to mix it up, Joe, you know, you're probably trying to mix it up with the wrong lad in uh, a- Adrian Mullen. So I thought he was very, uh, very good. Uh, Owen Cody really came into the game as it went along, and then can like, I just Dar- say something, Shane? Now, as Owen Cody, like I, Owen Cody was brilliant for 20 minutes yesterday. He was not. He wasn't man of the match, though. I, I have, like, I have to say, I thought he was. He was crucial in those couple of couple of plays that he got, and he won a couple of puckouts. But to me, like someone like Joey Holland for the hour. I'd say Dara Corcoran for the hour as well. I thought they were a lot more consistent. And I think that that Bally Hale half back line was impenetrable yesterday, realistically. They just couldn't break them down. Evan Shefflin, you know, was going that well at different stages. He, he got into goal scoring positions and everything. So no, I just I, I think there were more consistent performers over the hour, but Sox was probably the new man of the match, but Bally Hale uh, I would have had probably Joey Holden. Like Desi Hutchinson had to be moved away from Joey Holden, Shane. Such was the 
you know, the wraps that he was keeping them under after that first 10 minutes. And he got great joy when he went out wing forward as well. He ended up with four from play. But uh, probably would have had Joey Holden as man of the match. And one of the one of the viewers said there, just really understated play, just doing the simple thing right every time. Really like a manager's dream of a player, realistically. Yeah, um, I think we have Shane Kingston here. and uh, You might have to turn on your camera there, Shane. Okay, so uh, Shane will come in now in a second. There he is. Uh, so, uh, nice. oh, yeah, Shane. So, uh, Air Ambassador and Cork Hurler Shane Kingston. So, last month, Air was unveiled as a new sponsor of the GA Hurling All Ireland Senior Championship. The five year deal, which was announced on November 30th, further cements the long standing relationship between Air and the GA, highlighting the synergies that exist between hurling, the world's fastest field sport, and the Air, which is committed to providing full fibre, super fast broadband to over 1.9 million homes and businesses across Ireland. Shane, we're just talking about the Bally Hale victory over Bally Gunner yesterday. Did you watch the match uh, and what did you make of it? I've actually only watched the second half. I'll watch it later tonight. <laughs> well, what, the bit you did watch, what did you make of it? Oh, yeah, sure, it was unbelievable. Um, two unbelievable teams, in fairness. like. Hmm. Uh, so so yeah. what distracted you from watching the game? I was out today for. <laughs> <laughs> At <laughs> least you got it, man. Yeah. You said because I, I was chatting in the previous interview uh, earlier on, Shane. You said you watched the first half of the World Cup and you got tired. So I was, I was, uh, my ears did pick up. I wanted to know how you got tired, but there's, yeah, there's an was, obvious answer. That was that. reasoning. <laughs> so, and what sort of development did you get up to? Where were you the night before? Uh, we just had a team night out, so we were out. So we had a few drinks, and um, but yeah, I know interest in the World Cup anyway. To be honest. So Why not? That regardless. Is there any sports you are into outside of hurling? Um, yeah, I watch football. I probably watch rugby as well. Um, I just find it hard to watch the soccer. John, it's a bit slow. Even though the World Cup ended up being an unbelievable game, so I kind of wish I did watch it. But you know, <laughs> there's nothing worse there when it's one all for ninety minutes. You're like, oh my god. <laughs> So, can you tell us what it was last night out with the Cork lads, or, or was it the Douglas lads, and what's it been like going back with Pat Ryan? Yeah, uh, just a few Cork lads. Yeah, we just went out and had a few drinks. But yeah, we we're training away now. So, um, yeah, no, going all well so far. Training hard, as you can imagine. Now this time of year, so nearly looking forward to the break now next week. <laughs> yeah, and did you have Pat Ryan before, or were you you were just a couple of years too old for him? Were you? No, I had Pat in 2017. Um, okay. I actually had him when I was younger as well for Tony Forrestal under 14 tournament he was he was with us then but um, no so plenty of experience with Pat and obviously he's had plenty um experience with the under 20 teams over the last few years as well and how did you get on in that Tony Forrestal I think we lost the All-Ireland I think I think we lost right. the tip ah of course yeah yeah. Don't ever, not, don't ever give him a chance to smile. Yeah. Just say you lost to somebody. Just leave, say another or something. Like we, that. we won. Really we won. Yeah, we won. <laughs> you won. Yeah. <laughs> you mean, what, yeah. What's what's uh, what's Pat like? Ah, uh, sound, sound. Yeah, we all have great time for Pat now. To be honest, so obviously we were obviously, we were delighted to have him back involved. And um, yeah. should we won the month's championship in 2017 and lost to Waterford in the All Ireland semi final. So, um, had a decent enough year that year. Um. But yeah, I haven't really worked with him since. So hmm. obviously looking forward to the next few years, hopefully. Yeah. And and what sort of manager is he? Like is he very different from, you know, for example, obviously your dad and then maybe John Myler as well? Um yeah, I suppose look, at the end of the day, everyone brings a different approach to it. Um but no, we all have like Pat's very sound. I suppose he's a fellow you can you can just go and talk to really and he'll do as much as he can to help you out in any way. Um but yeah, no, sure, he's a great hurling brain. So, you know, we're lucky enough to have him back again. Mm -hmm. Michael? Just something that uh, we were chatting about you earlier on, Shane, I thought I found it really interesting. You obviously saw how much effort and time your dad puts into it firsthand because you're obviously living at home. Uh, just can you compare the demands of an inter county player to a modern inter county manager? Yeah, I was only saying it earlier, probably be reiterating the same points now again. But, um, yeah, sure. Look, we, we arrive for training. If you're training at half six, seven o'clock, you probably arrive between five and half past. Um, you go out, you do your training, come in, tog off, shower, food, and out the gap. Whereas, I suppose when you look at it, who organises the pitches, who organises the, the lights, who organises the drills, the training session, the food. So, like, when you think about it that way, what 
seems a two hour thing for us. Well, all in all, it's probably three or four hours, but by the time you the training session being an hour and a half, I suppose it's probably a seven and eight hour of organization before it. Um, and that falls back on the management then. Um, so yeah, like they definitely put in a lot more time than we would. Um, and I don't think people probably realize that. Mm. Was his phone always ringing? Is it a case of his phone is always ringing? Because when you're, when you're looking after, I don't know, I'm going to say the guts of about 36 players and then, you know, at least half that, half that size for a backroom team, probably the way things are now, that's a lot yeah. of people that you, that you have to be linking in with. It's a lot of problems that people have. It's a lot of sickness that people have and they're ringing you, ringing you or ringing the manager, which I'd imagine, I yeah, hope they weren't yeah. ringing the, the landline anyway. I hope you don't have a landline <laughs> that they were ringing. Around. No, they weren't <laughs> ringing the landline anyway, but no, his, his phone was nonstop. Yeah. He'd be outside walking around the whole time. Didn't even put up his ear anymore. He was just having it on speaker walking around, like just constantly on the phone. I don't know how I don't know how anyone does it to be honest. <laughs> Would um just in terms of the year that you had with Cork, do you feel like it was one that kind of slightly got away? Because he had opportunities <laughs> against Galway that day and you know, after the way he battered Tipperary, which I definitely don't want to bring up. But you know, it seemed like okay, maybe you can pick up the year from there. Yeah, I suppose look. Obviously, the Galway game was a disappointing. Um, we obviously we didn't start great. Lost to Limerick, lost to Clare. Kind of turned around down in Waterford and Walsh Park. Um, beat Tip, and then I suppose we were kind of building momentum. Then again, um, then the Galway game we actually didn't play bad. We just weren't the most accurate on the day. I think we came away with about twenty five wides. So like, I suppose even if half of them went over, it was it was going to be a comfortable win. Um, you know, people would look at it as a negative and say, sure, Cork were shocking or whatever. But like, I suppose if you have 25 additional shots, it's it's lost. So we couldn't couldn't have been that bad. Um, mm. But yeah, obviously then it's it's disappointing then to, to lose a game like that when you feel yeah, you could have maybe even pushed on. Yeah, I mean, like people obviously talk about Cork and whether they're, you know, all Ireland contenders or not. But I, I would look at you and I think you have pretty much everything. Obviously it has to be arranged in the perfect way to make sure you get past the big teams but like do you feel confident that you have the playing resources yeah absolutely i probably speak on behalf of everyone in the group and probably every other inter-county team you never really go out and think you're going to lose um so you're training so hard for for such a long length of time that you have to you have to be confident going into any game no matter who the opposition are um so yeah definitely obviously i'd back everyone in inside in our group so you know i obviously I feel that, and everyone else would, that we have the, I suppose, the players and the back room and everything to, to win. Because mm, Vernie's always slating Cork, aren't you, Vernie? <laughs> I, wouldn't say, I, wouldn't say, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm slating now. Just, I, the way things are now, Shane, I'm offering you motivation going forward. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> everybody's, always, yeah, everybody's always saying, like, Pat Hoban, the Ballyhale manager, came out yesterday and said they were written off in all quarters, and this and that was questioned. So if you don't have, if, if people don't question you, then you don't have anyone to give answers to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all the outside noise you, in your so you could you could get away. <laughs> you don't do you do you pay any attention to any anything that goes on? Like uh, even like your dad probably would have come under a bit of criticism as well. Is that anything that you notice or anything like that, or do you just try and block it all out? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't take much notice, to be honest. Um, look, obviously, in the in the, I suppose the championship season, um, you wouldn't really be looking at the social media too much. You'd nearly be trying to avoid people, to be honest. Um, so yeah, no, we we kind of keep the outside out, I suppose, as you'd probably hear the term used a lot. Um, so we wouldn't really focus too much on what people are saying about us. Yeah. Now, to be fair, after the after the. After the Waterford game, Conor Lahan came out and said that they were answering questions that people had raised about, about them. So there definitely was some motivation there, no matter what you say. <laughs> um, Jane, there's a question in here saying, is there many Bears lads in with Cork? So, I mean, they had a great run this year. And maybe if that red card for Conor Cahillan hadn't happened, then I still think that was a bit harsh that he was more throwing the hurley away and then caught the Yeah, and... it looked like throwing the hurley, right, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But like, uh, would would some of those young lads are they sort of the likes of Ethan Toomey, maybe Ben O'Connor? Although I'm not sure, he maybe he's going down the rugby route. I'm not entirely sure. But would some of those lads be getting a run now? Yeah. So we've obviously two Callans are there. Ethan Toomey's there. Uh, ben Cunningham's in. Brian Hayes is in. Um, I think that's it. So obviously Ben O'Connor. This this him. He's only going in doing his leaving cert anyway. So. <laughs> 
you can't, you can't be asking him in as well. Just on that, just on that as well, uh, Shane, would you be so, someone like Ben O'Connor who, you know, he's playing rugby, I think he's playing senior school rugby as well, and he's probably playing uh, Harkey Cup or, you know, he's playing senior hurling as well. Would you be very, uh, you know, aware of managing the load that a guy like that is doing? Like, you would have gotten a lot at a young age as well. I think you were calling him a cork after your leaving, sir, too. There is a bit of a balancing act with guys like that about not giving them too much too soon as well and having them kind of, you know, not burnt out or anything like that, but having them even physically kind of fried by the time to get to 21 yeah. or 22. Oh, yeah, definitely. Sure, he's probably only about 18, I'd say. Do you know, I suppose as much as we wouldn't want to say it, his priority right now should probably be the leaving cert. Um, obviously, at the time, you don't really care, but in the grand scheme of things, it should be the most important for the for the next couple of months. But yeah, obviously, look, the, the level he's playing at with the Bears, hurling and football, and on top of the rugby then, and senior cup and that kind of stuff, his uh, his loading would have to be monitored, I'd imagine. Otherwise, the last thing you want is a, a fella like him getting burnt out and not being able. With the uh, with Douglas, um, we've kind of talked about a lot of times on the show here that we always kind of felt that Douglas would come, that you've got you know great playing resources and that sort of stuff. Do you think there's any particular reason in, in either code why it hasn't, you know, taken off fully? Um, I don't know. It's hard to pinpoint. Really, I suppose, in the hurling. I suppose I can only speak on the hurling because I haven't played football in so long. Right. Um, yeah, like we've been knocked out in the quarterfinal for the last four years. Um, you know, everybody kind of talks about the, the good team we have, but I don't think it's as good as everyone makes it out to be. And we don't have, you know, the big names that we had a couple of years ago. Um, and then, yeah, look, from the football perspective, I suppose, Douglas football would be very strong if you if you had everyone. But that's a, that's not a conversation for here, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just if we're to sort of to talk about other stuff, like what's your first memories of, of Hurling and like who were the players that had you fall in love with the game? Maybe even just watching the fighter, was it? Um, geez, I don't even know to be honest. It was probably something I was just the same as everyone when I was growing up. I was doing everything hurling, rugby, soccer, swimming, karate, hurling. And then as time goes on, you obviously notice you might be a bit better at something than than the rest. Um, so I kind of just stuck with the, the hurling, football, and soccer. Then I got to a stage then where I had to pick one not pick one, but pick a, a sport. So gave up soccer, obviously. Um so I was I was probably just kind of forced into it really. Um you know, I suppose if it came to it again, I probably wouldn't have a choice. It it'd have to be hurling. Yeah. Um but you know, I kind of started off the same as most people really in the development squads and kind of just work my way up. So you know, I wasn't really looking at anyone or being inspired by anyone, it was just the way it worked out really. The karate, was that your parents putting you in there because they knew you were going to be an inside forward and you had to be looking out <laughs> looking out against pesky corner yeah. backs? Yeah, it could have been. Just yeah, talk to me about how that's, 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 that's it's not the most it's not the most um like when you were saying you did you were doing all sports as most people are doing you soccer, rugby, football, yeah, and then karate is a bit different now than than the norm, it'd be fair to say. Yeah, do you know what? I don't even remember it was so long ago. Um I did a bit of boxing then for a while. Um, do you know, I was just staying active, really. I was just doing everything. And yeah. Because my parents were running around like yo-yos and dropping us everywhere. And are you, were you the sort of guy who was um, like mad watching hurling as well as playing it? Were you one of these people obsessed by watching it? Or were you able to, when you leave down the hurley, that was it? Um, oh, when I leave down the hurley, that would be it, yeah. Yeah. Really? I wouldn't so, uh, be obsessed. I was, I'd like to have a life outside of hurling as well, like, you know. You yeah. Need a, I, time to relax. So what are the hobbies outside of hurling? Um, I mean, I'm working now, so there's not too many hobbies these days. Um, like watching TV, Netflix, meeting up with lads, meeting up with the, the missus. Um, do you know, I wouldn't really be playing golf or anything too much. And do you know the way things are with, with hurling at the moment? You're you're constantly on the go, so then when you're not, you kind of want to enjoy the break, um, while trying to maintain your, I suppose your physique to some extent. So just trying to keep fit in the gym and doing that bit of running, but I suppose trying to stay fresh and leave the hurley out of your hand until until you're back training. Really, mm, I thought you were going to say now that you're into video games or uh, 
I don't know, chess or something. Sometimes, like that. yeah. I got a I got a PlayStation there during lockdown the first time and got me through lockdown for a while, but uh now nah, I'm kinda falling out of it now again. It's a waste of yeah. time. <laughs> that is true, but it's good crack all the same. Look, Shane, great to have you on the show and uh hopefully we'll be chatting again soon. Absolutely. Thanks very much. All the best. Yeah, so let's uh finish off talking about the uh the Bally uh, Bally Hale win over Bally Gunner. Um let's talk about what Daryl Sullivan actually had to say. He says you go to, um you go through it, they fully uh they were fully deserving of their victory. They got in at us a number of times, we didn't get in at them. Hats off to them, we're sick and gutted over it. We came expecting a big battle and we just came up short. It's very similar to that monster final against Boris Lee in twenty nineteen, exact same, that's how we feel. Gutted. And then he was talking about his respect for them. They're the ones that we look up to, the ones we try to emulate. It's probably ingrained in them from an early age. Hurling is their game, and they say, listen, what are we famous for? Well, we're famous for hurling. When you have that and you have kids growing up with that tradition, it helps, and that's what it is. It's ingrained in every single one of them. Uh, do, you, do you kind of feel that uh, it's getting close to a last hurrah for this brilliant Bally Hale team? Because, you know, in, in another year or two, the team is going to change a little bit again. And I know they've had that in the past, but they probably had you know, more superstars always waiting in the wings. Yeah, potentially so. But I suppose if you uh, if you look at it, who were the ones like outside of maybe Joey Holden and that? Who were the ones? Who was the ones driving them forward yesterday? Owen Cody took the game with a scruff of neck. I'd say Adrian Mullen did as well. Yeah. Um, Kyle Short all coming in. Killian Corkin coming in. Who are only chaps really? Uh, Owen Keneally's only a chap as well. Like they're they're actually Dara Corcoran. Light, yeah, they're light enough guys. Dara Corkin as well. Yeah. So yeah, like. TJ is still going to stay going at club level for another three or four years. Uh, Joey Holden's probably going to head off. I think he had flights booked for December 30th. Uh, so I don't know how many times he's changed these flights, but they've been changed several times. He probably, you know, head off at the end of January. Like he's not going to be back realistically this time. Um, he's going off for a couple of years and uh, who knows whether he'll hurl with Ballyhale Shamrocks again or not. Colin Fenley, you know, talked about travelling too. There is going to be a bit of a, a transition there in time, all right. But listen, they've got plenty of talent coming through. No, maybe none of those kind of generational talents that you that that we're talking about. Maybe uh, like lads that have, are absolutely lighting it up. But Niall Short, all in a couple of years, they're all going to add. They're all going to add a lot to it, and they're getting great experience now. Um, I think it might be a bit premature to say it's the, the last kick. I have to say, a bit premature. And a lot of people were saying that yesterday, that this was it for Ballyhale. And like, just on. Um, have I written them Ballyhale, off? Maybe a bit, but on, on people saying that Ballygunner were, you know, favourites or surprise Ballygunner were favourites, like it did look before the game that Ballygunner had taken, you know, everything to a new level. You know, they were better than they were last February. Ballyhale were somewhat inconsistent. Um, and it's amazing how the scripts change. If Bally Gunner had won yesterday, like I'd be fairly confident that to be back to back All Ireland champions, and maybe then Bally Hale would disappear. But you know, it looks like Bally Hale are going to be like Bally Hale are going to be roaring hot favourites going into the All Ireland final. There's no point in saying any no. different. And, uh, no, nah, and that's that, that's just the way it is. But uh, it was just a real kind of defiant performance yesterday. Um, and while they were underdogs, like they they were slight underdogs, but they used everything that they possibly could to uh, deliver, you know, a huge performance, particularly in that third quarter. The third, like, we were all talking about Bally Hale, you know, dying off in games maybe recently and been inconsistent over the course of a game. It was pretty consistent yesterday for from minute one to the very end. And I, I have to say, when Colin Fenley's, I think it was a point effort, drop short at the end, you're just thinking, oh, like, you're just thinking, they've left the door open here for something to happen at the other end. But it just didn't look like they were ever going to let Bally Gunner in. And something as well, Shane, and I will say it because I, I saw it several times, Bally Hale did tactically foul yesterday at different stages of the game. And, you know, very robust tackles when it looked like Bally Gunner were going to get ahead of steam up. And that was... That was, and TJ alluded to it in his interview after he said there were six or seven Bally Hale players that had a chance to interrupt that final play from Harry Ruddle last February. And he said they didn't take it. But there was no way Bally Gunner were building up ahead of steam yesterday. It was, they stopped them every chance they got in the last couple of minutes. And just like it's so much, it is so much harder to score from that dropped in free than it is when you have ball in hand and you can create a bit of chaos. They kind of had everything on their own terms yesterday. 
Yeah, look, Ballyhale are going nowhere. And uh, Harburn6 says, winning your own ball up in the forwards was key. Being up at Croak, uh, Croker, Ballyhale held the half back line and forced Saki to get pinpoint puck outs because they weren't going to win puck outs going long. Uh, Nisha Waldron's ooze and as has to be noticed. So this was during the TG <laughs> Carrot commentary. Yeah, I saw Eddie Brennan giving him plenty of props, saying that it was like the NFL commentary. I don't know if you... Uh, ever watch it but Tony Romo he's a, a former Dallas Cowboys quarterback and if someone does something like Patrick Mahomes this brilliant quarterback if he does like one of his kind of cool little shovel passes or no look he'll be going whoop you know or something like that it adds a little something to it so hey keep Nisha on TG Carr as often as possible he's uh, he's the right man for the job there um will we move on to the uh, unbelievable victory for Don Loy over uh, St. Thomas's like what a performance yeah. Savage win, yeah. Savage win. Um, it's funny. I was chatting to uh, Declan Bogue after the Belfast Telegraph, and I was just saying he was talking about Gregory O'Kane. We were chatting to him after. Gregory O'Kane has been involved directly or indirectly in every Antrim title that Dunlai have won, and he's also been involved in their four, their five All Ireland semi final wins. Four as a player, I think it was. Uh, oh, I'm going uh, at Ryan ninety five. Um, oh, I can't think of uh, Glenmore 96, 2003 was Mount Zion, and 2004 was oh, I ne nearly well, had they, them all off. They lost to Newtown Chandram in the final, so it was either a Galway team or it Portumna, was a... Portumna, yeah, Portumna, yeah. Um, and now, uh, St. Thomas is yesterday, like that's it's phenomenal. He's been involved in all five, and like it was, you know, it was a shock that they won. But the nature of their performance, they were fully deserving, I have to say. From the from the off, I think Nigel Elliott it was got a point in the he first class, minute or two. Just um yeah, Britain, the pace of him as well, Shane. He came off in about the fifty eight minute or that had absolutely emptied himself. Um but they, they really I thought they played the ball around well at times. The only thing was they went from I think like the tenth minute to the twenty sixth minute without a score and I kind of was kinda of thinking at that stage that the game was gonna get away from them. Keelan Malai, who we give loads of props to hit a couple of really kind of rash shots within those time that it within and that Eamon Smith as well. Minutes. Yeah, Eamon Smith from distance as well, both of whom were brilliant. But I thought the game was getting away from them when Thomas's were gone five three up. But um I suppose there's a couple of things from a Thomas's point of view. Dara Burke going off, crying off with a, a what looked like a hamstring before it started. I know he came on, but he still wasn't moving well. James Regan been out. Um, surprised Shane Cooney didn't start, or when you know when Dara Burke couldn't start, that they didn't bring Shane Cooney in and jig things around a bit. Like I don't, I, I don't think David Burke is as effective at centre back as he is from midfield or higher up the pitch. Well, he I, was I the there last year in the All Ireland semi final against Ballyhale. He, you know, he had a great game in Thurles that time. Yeah, but when they, when like Thomas's were stuttering yesterday and they really started to somewhat get into the game in the second half when Burke kind of pushed up a bit, and that was probably when Shane Cooney came on as well. But it was a real no show from a Thomas's point of view, a team that, you know, had, you know, a serious point to prove and a lot of hurt from last year's All Ireland semi final. They just didn't, didn't show anything yesterday, unfortunately, from their point of view. And they would have been kicking themselves going down the road yesterday. But from a Dunlai point of view, you know, it's their fifth All Ireland final appearance now, uh, and they were fully deserving. And just on Keelan Malai's goal, it's absolutely brilliant. He no, I, I, I had to watch it back a couple of times. He'd caught the ball twice. He'd no catches left. Uh, Shane Cooney and Fintan Burke were converging on him. He was going to be the meat in the sandwich, so he just flicks the ball on and used his pace to run on. The two boys couldn't touch him then because the ball was, you know, away from him. And he slammed the ball into the net, and really that that was the difference maker at the end. But just as good a goal as you would see this year. It was class. Uh, speaking to us now is Air Ambassador and Dublin uh, hurling captain Ono O'Donnell. Last month, Air in, was unveiled as a sponsor of the GA Hurling All Ireland Senior Championship. The five year deal was announced on November 30th, uh, and it further cements the long standing relationship between Air and the GA, highlighting the synergies that exist between Hurling, the world's fastest field sport, and Air, which is committed to biding, uh, providing full fibre, super fast broadband to over 1.9 million homes and businesses across Ireland. Jeez, that was some mouthful, but I got through it. Owen, how are things? Good. How are you, lads? Good to, have, good to be here. Um, did you get a chance to see either the hurling matches yesterday? I I watched the highlights. I was a World Cup man yesterday. Unfortunately, it was um, a pity the the time and schedule. Uh, but I was treated to an absolute uh, excitement in the the World Cup. I thought it was a brilliant game. Did you? Um, were you happy for Messi or were you disgusted for Mbappe? I. I was happy for Messi, but I have to admit, I'm very much a Ronaldo man. So it did hurt me a little that the, the debate oh. is probably finished that Messi has taken 
the go title, unfortunately, that um, it's probably an inarguable case now. I'm leading. And you, is that because you're a Man United fan? Is that how you ended up under Ronaldo? No, side? not not really. I'm like probably United man because of of Ronaldo. I just uh, for years have have thought Ronaldo was the the man. I thought the way he carries himself and the way he um, performances and everything like that. He has the X factor and the star quality. So probably feel a, a little bit let down in in recent months the way things have have gone. But um, yesterday was the nail in the coffin for the debate, maybe. What did you make of the of the Qatari lads putting the the negligee, the little uh, the thing, the robe over him? That was, yeah, it was fairly yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, it just it, you'd never see it in Crow Park, would you? Like it's just not in the, <laughs> in the culture in any shape or form. Just probably because the abuse you get on WhatsApp would be wouldn't be worth it. You'd have to just take it off straight away. Can I just ask you on just on the 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 matches clashing like the World Cup clashing with like you know the biggest hurling club game in over a decade like. Are we, we're shooting ourselves in the foot a bit with things like this, are we not? Like, you're a hurler man to the core, but the World Cup is every four years and the chance to see an unbelievable, you know, historic moment yesterday. Like, we sh- should we be making people choose in that type of, type of instance? Yeah, yeah, of course we are. Like, I fully would admit, first of all, that I don't know the, the scheduling headache that the GAA face. I'm, I'm a very fair weather fan when it comes to the logistics of it. But as a neutral, I do know that I was hugely disappointed when uh, you couldn't watch both because when you saw the the, the draw for Ballyhale and Ballygunner, you're licking your lips and be like, this is like after the repeat of or the repeat of the, the final from last year, you were saying this is one of the games of the year. So uh, as, as an avid Hurling fan, I did choose to, to watch the World Cup unfortunately because it's one of the probably the biggest sporting occasion in the world um so yeah like absolutely you want to showcase hurling to as as many people as you want as you can and, and get people into crow park and i'd say crow park would have had a, a couple of more thousand very easily if it, if it wasn't scheduling with the, the world cup w- would you have any interest in playing any other sports over the years other than hurling and football um uh, i played five side most winters if that counts that's just the, the best crack you know, come across um, and yeah. yeah, me and my friends, we we uh, we play a five sides, taken deadly serious. Like want to win at, at all costs, and it's just a, it's a like it's a brilliant way to stay fit, but you're not doing it for that. But it's just like a such a a lease of fresh energy and a bit of crack, and it's a it's a different sport. But no, I never really did. Like I play golf the odd time, but I wouldn't be great. Um, I would I would have loved to have given uh, Australian rules a good shot. Now, that's what, what I, I would have loved to have, have given a shot over the years, but unfortunately, the ship has probably sailed on that one. Yeah, and did was there, did you ever go to a combine or anything like that? Yeah, I, 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 I back back when I was second year minor, I, I was asked to combine and I was asked to a trial with, with Carlton, but I broke my leg, unfortunately, and missed both trials, uh, missed the whole football championship, missed the hurling championship, missed everything. Uh, I never got asked back. So, what could have been maybe, but um, it's a it's a different level over there. So maybe I'm better off sticking with the with the hurling. And when it sounds it like you've the... issued a bit. Of, he's issued a bit of a come get me plea from by the sounds of things here. Far from it. Far from it. I think uh, that ship has has sailed. Like you, you look at the the condition and one of these lads. I think I'll stick to my full back and cover my 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 small square and not let anybody in at it. And when you're playing five a side now, would you be a rooter or would you be trying to step overs? Oh, step overs, striker up front, like no tracking back, like <laughs> Ronaldo man through and through. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, could you talk to us about your year? Because obviously, you're, you're hurling away with Dublin, you're the captain, the season doesn't go the way uh, you want it to, and then you end up with the footballers. So, what was what was it like for you? Yeah, like first of all, it was it was extremely unexpected um i know a few people were, might have been giving me a bit of grief online that it, it, it might have been planned and maybe i didn't have my, my best year but i can very much assure people that it was completely unexpected um just harlan finished up um a lot sooner than expected unfortunately and uh, the opportunity came about and, and desi asked me to, to join the panel and it to be honest, it wasn't a, a massively easy decision. Um, I spent a lot of time talking to to my girlfriend and my family, and uh, weighed up the the pros and cons. That it was an opportunity to to go in and learn from arguably one of the the best teams that have played the game. But I also was going in at the All Ireland quarter final stage, and it would be a huge learning curve. It would be a huge time commitment when I was already busy with work. I was just after getting knocked out of the campaign that I dedicated my whole 
life to or my whole adult life to so like there was a, a couple of factors to um to the to weigh up but obviously i i went with the decision to, to try and embrace the challenge and to it um although I mightn't have finished maybe the way i would have liked it it's not something i regret it was a a, a really interesting couple of months was there a bedding in period for you like when you first went in and maybe you were having training matches and all that did did it take you a while to find your feet like i know you're, you're you obviously play football with whitehall mm. and i think one of the guys with sing street uh one day was telling me that you'd possibly scored a hat-trick against them maybe in full forward maybe I, I don't have that right but did it take you a while to find your feet yeah it did like yeah that, that sing streak uh i think grew legs i don't think it was quite a hat-trick i think i i, I got on the on the score sheet but i think every time i saw that the, what i scored had had increased dramatically uh, I'm safe to say at the time i was i was fu fueling the fire but now i can i can safely say it wasn't um wasn't that much but it, yeah it was it was a huge bedding in period i think Football and hurling are completely different sports, and I think I, I, I club my athleticism and my strength, maybe in fitness, like carried me over the line. Whereas now I was introduced to a very high class performance setup, and not only was I switching code, I was also switching position that I play full forward with the club, but I wasn't playing full forward with with Dublin. I was playing more in the half back line around there. Um, so it was a, a learning a new position. I haven't played half back since minor when I when I played football for Dublin. So I was learning the the ropes on a new position. And football is a completely different game to hurling. Might sound like a, a an amazingly obvious thing to say, but it's not really when when you think about it in terms of where I feel I was getting. I felt my my football ability. I felt my athleticism. I felt my uh, communication. My my confidence was all very much on par with the guys there and i felt like anytime i was on the ball i could add value and i was able to contribute and i was good at going forward and tacked and all the rest but really where the differences came was handing off a man and um, no one went went to dive in and my philosophy in hurling is, is massively based on not letting the fellow american get the ball at all whereas whereas in football the, the philosophy on, on defending is completely different that that's just not possible and people can get you on loops people can get you on backdoor cuts people can can get you on all manner of different things so it's a completely different defending style um and then throw in systems and plays and the Dublin footballers have been on the road for a fair bit of time it, it's it's fair to say so they have a lot of calls and play so learning them was a, was a learning curve as well do you think tactically uh, football is a good bit ahead of hurling I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say ahead it's definitely not ahead I think it's 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 different that you can in football get a short kick off off and the ball mightn't reach say as as a as a player we might concede a short kick out and we mightn't be involved in the play for 20 30 seconds so we have time to set up we've time to to bring a lad back or whatever the the system may be whereas in hurling you don't have that luxury because if you pull players back it's a short puck out and they can score from the half back line they can hit a ball 80 90 yards so i'm not going to say behind i don't think it's a thing that uh, that hurling has to catch up i think it's a, a different sport and probably shouldn't be compared as better or worse it's just completely different mm, michael was it a bit daunting on going into all of that uh going into like something that's totally not it's not alien to you because you're playing club football but going into a county setup it sounds like almost a guy getting called into the irish rugby squad and having to learn calls and you know you have to do an awful lot of learning just to even get on par with lads if you get me yeah, well, it, like, like rightly or, or, or wrongly, what, what was daunting for me was I felt, and I, I, I discussed this with a couple of my close friends and they probably disagreed with me, but where I felt what was daunting was I felt I was putting my reputation on the line going onto the, the football team that I was joining the team at an All-Ireland quarterfinal stage and I knew it would have been a very difficult thing to break into that team and, and add value to that team. So I felt like, if I, oh, come here, if I don't, make this team sure like i'm not good enough or i'll be viewed by the country it's not good enough and i probably was aware it might have been a bit high profile making the swap but I, I didn't think it would be as high profile as it was i was actually shocked at the amount of attention it got but i that was my biggest fear was that i was putting my reputation on the line slightly that um i obviously would be a, a big competitor and, and would fancy myself and, and would back my abilities and if i didn't have enough time to to break in i felt slightly embarrassed and and as 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 things turned out um i i didn't it didn't end the the way i wanted uh personally and and as a team point of view that 
Um, I didn't feature against Kerry, which is um, very disappointed. I, I felt I probably could have uh, added value on the day. I felt I, I was going well in training. Uh, I felt that um, I was the type of player maybe that, that could have added something on the day. And that's no disrespect to, to Desi Farrell. I think there'd be players beside me on the bench that w- would feel the exact same thing and, and have a brilliant relationship with Desi. Um, he, his job is to pick his best things. But like... I was very and and still am very disappointed with um, how it turned out. Being very honest, just on that, it's it's mad that that you feel like that because you'd very little time to bed into one of the best squads in the country, and you still played championship. You came on in that quarter final mm. in the close in the close of minutes. Like e- like I know what you're saying, and it's probably because you're a high achiever, particularly on the hurling pitch. Like even playing championship for Dublin at any stage last year, having only come in when you did, to me is an achievement in itself. I know that you're probably wanted more though yeah no I did I did and I, like I, I appreciate that and, and, and people have said that to me after but it, it doesn't make me feel an awful lot better Um I wanted to, to come in and, and to add value and to play at the, the highest level and I'd be very honest unless <laughs> unless I started and maybe unless I won man the match I probably still wouldn't have been happy that I just wanted to um I wanted the, the storyline finish, which may have been unreasonable. Um, and things went on the day that probably didn't favour me. That um, like I'm, just because I play fullback in hurling, I'm, I'm not a fullback in football. I've never played fullback in football, and we had like uh, three injuries in, in the fullback line, so that used up subs. And there was lo- a load of different factors on the day that that maybe didn't go my way. But um, I definitely felt I, I I could have added something on the day from my experience in in the training matches and how I got on against Cork and, and things like that. But that's sport, isn't it? You don't know, very few people except for Messi, as we discussed, gets the, the fairy tale finish. We don't it doesn't work like that. Yeah, it sure doesn't. So now to, to come back to the, the present, it's been all changed with Dublin Hurling. Obviously my old buddy Matty Kenny, he's no longer there. Keno Callahan has gone away for a year. Chris crummy has gone away for a year. I think Liam Rush is away. So there, it is all changed. But um, what's it been like the first period of time with Michal Donahue? Yeah, like, yeah, it, it, it's been huge change. The uh, the personnel in the dressing room and the personnel in the, in the management team have, have all completely changed. So it's, it's a fresh start. I think like it's very evident early on to see how Michal achieved, how he's achieved what he has. Uh, when you all Ireland with the, the club and the county that his backroom team and his coaching staff are, are absolutely brilliant that they demand incredibly high standards in training and if you don't meet them standards you're let know very quickly so as a result training has, has been very good the lads you mentioned um stepping away for for traveling and um, they're huge losses like they're of course they are. They're they're three of our, our biggest players on the pitch and, and certainly off the pitch they were brilliant men for for driving standards and culture um other lads have, have have stepped away as well that were brilliant lads to have that could analyze a game and could say something in a meeting that would be like jesus that's a such a clever thing to to say and pinpoint so it's going to take some some bedding in for for the new guys but it's an opportunity for other lads to step up and you'll forgive me if, if this if it sounds like a cliche but it's it's not like there's a whole left by lads there that were leaders on the team and either people fill them and and we progress or people don't fill them and we don't progress that's the, the way it works mm, michael just just a, a quick question away away from dublin on um so you won the senior b in dublin how what's the scenario where you don't represent dublin in we'll say the leinster intermediate championship yeah, I, I I didn't understand that really, to be honest. Uh, but I have to admit, I would be very much listening to like across the board group stru- structures. I wouldn't be the type of player that would know who plays who or how we advance and mm. what the, the standards of the group were. Like very much would would play the matches in front of me, and I wouldn't be like the, the logistics guy. Uh, so I I don't know. I, I like there was two parts of me I would have loved to have gone further with the club, but. It was an extraordinarily long year for me and maybe selfishly I, I was like, look, I, I need a break. We have a new management team coming in with Dublin. Uh, Dublin is, is obviously a huge thing in my life. I wanted to, to, to take a week before going back in with, with, with them and and put my shoulder to it with this, that we have a lot of new players. So like, if we went on, on a, an extended club run, which would have been brilliant, would have obviously gave that my full attention. It obviously would have maybe left another hole in, in the Dublin camp, which I'm happy to to be a part of. Hmm. 
And uh, another question, like it, it was brilliant to win that title with against Falls, but of course it went to a replay, extending your year further again. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and also, then you had that football match against uh, Nafina on telly, just unbelievably dramatic. And I'm sure that was a painful one to lose as well. So you did have a fairly dramatic year with the club. Yeah, we did. And, and kind of, I, I we won the B and I was like, this is brilliant. I really enjoyed it. But I, ha- like, I was more happy for people in the club maybe than, than myself that I was like, we shouldn't be in this B that uh, we got relegated last year. And if you look at the starting team from this year to last year, it was just like an, an accumulation of such unfortunate injuries. I tore my hamstring. Um, Cormac Coslo was injured. Lee Gannon was injured. Like it was uh, end of my brother, uh, end of Donald was injured. Like there was, it was such a, an unfortunate year for, for injuries and we got relegated but realistically, we shouldn't shouldn't have been in the B. So when it was great, get back up. But we have bigger aspirations than that, um, which is just my honest opinion. And it was great to win. Now I loved winning it with great crack in the club after. But um, it's not something to rest your laurels on. Mm. We were asking uh, Shane Kingston a little earlier about his hobbies away from playing sport. What are yours? <sighs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, you're going to say Netflix, aren't you? No, I'm, I'm going to say I don't have a massive amount of hobbies I've decided, to be honest. I don't have time. Like, I work a, a relatively busy job. Like, um, I work till six in the evening and I go to training and I go to training. And when I finish training, I'm in bed. Like, so I don't really have any hobbies. It sounds quite sad, but, like, my circle is, is very small. Like, I really, my my social life is based on meeting people for coffee. That's I do that a lot. Like, I'd, I'd meet friends for coffee um and my catch up that, that would be the extent of, of my hobbies because you just don't have time. I play golf, I'm sh- like fairly cat at it, so like <laughs> I feel more around the course, like so. I don't know, just being honest, I don't really have a massive amount of hobbies. Yeah, well, we've taken up plenty of your time, Michael. Have you any final question for no, golf? no, all good? No, I presume I, I just saw a couple of jerseys in the background. That an all blacks jersey over your uh, over your right shoulder, is it? I'll give you a quick glimpse and, and uh, just there uh, or this way. Sorry, we'll put you up full screen there. And um, there we go. Now we have to get rid of that. There's a glimpse of it. Now we have to get rid of the. the this is an air event, so we'll keep the, the air in focus. <laughs> <laughs> do, do my part. Um, is, is, are, the, are the All Blacks a team? Like you were, I know you're, you're big into culture and that. Like if you're talking about culture, there's probably no greater team or an institution. They're not in the, the dogs, though, aren't they? Culture. I thought they're, they're going to the dogs at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I've been very privileged that I've met a lot of the players two or three times with the connection between AIG. Um, I've met a, a fair few of them. So that jersey is actually signed by the, the World Cup winning team. It was in 15 or, or something like that. I was doing a gig in Dublin and I met Ryan Crotty um, and got on really well with him. And kind of were just, you know, the nature of these gigs, you're standing around all day and we're having a coffee or whatever. And I, I got on really well and we swapped jerseys. I gave him a, a Dublin jersey and he gave him my jer- Dublin jersey probably in the bin somewhere, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, uh, so he gave me the jersey and uh, I followed him on Instagram after and surprise, he followed me back. And I was like, this is unbelievable. Did uh, you slip so, into his DMs then? Slept into his DM. You know, yeah. Dead right, I did. Dead right. And I just sent him a message saying it was great to meet him. Um, I, I really enjoyed chatting to him. And if I sent over a jersey, would he get the lads to sign it and send it back? And he did. And uh, to be fair to him, we sent it back and it's hanging up on the wall now. But like, why w- why I have it hanging on the wall is is my passion and my where what really gives me my kicks is like the psychology element and the culture elements of um the team i just like i love every factor of and trying to build the culture and the all blacks are, are kings of it and they're what underpins a lot of of what they do like the tip of the iceberg is they try to leave the, the jersey in a better place and they, they found it so um it's something that that i take really to heart and as someone that's been around Dublin a, a long time um, it's something that I'm trying to, to help uh, one of many people trying to help in, in Dublin at the moment uh, start a, a legacy and a culture that when when new players join um, they're 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 slipping into a system and a, and a, a style of of work ethic that's already there rather than uh, bringing lads up to scratch and the final thing, did you notice that there was a Dublin jersey in the crowd among the Argentina yeah. supporters? Yeah, yesterday? yeah, yeah. The the but it, it's a spitting image of an Argentina jersey. Yeah, it is. Yeah, There's always one. There's always one. There is indeed. Look, oh, great chatting to you, and hopefully we'll be chatting again in the future. Really enjoyed that, guys. Thanks for having me. 
All the best, all the best. Okay, brilliant to chat to Owen O'Donnell there of Dublin and Whitehall, Colm Kills. Um, so we were in the middle of talking about Dunloy against uh, St. Thomas's. That's, do you know what? I t- Could you say that Dunloy could have won this by a little bit more? Because, um, I mean, fair enough. St. Thomas's, they were down the two starters in Shane Cooney, obviously James Regan as well. These are two lads that have and do currently play with Galway. And of course, Dara Burke going off was a huge one. And then, like, the ball wasn't sticking up front. There's no point in saying otherwise. They decided to play Connor Cooney out the field rather than inside. And with good reason, because obviously they want him involved in the play all the time. But then the ball wasn't sticking up front. And at the other end, though, I thought, you know, Dunloy left a lot of chances behind them from, because they were shooting for 70 yards rather than getting the ball into Shan Elliott and Conal Cunning. But for a finish, God, they really just took over this game. Ah, they did, in fairness. And like Conal Cunning had a penalty save uh, excellently down low by, by Gerald Kelly. Uh, did a couple mm, of would you say he kind of put it to the you know the side that the goalie hurls the, holds the boss at and it wasn't quite over far enough? That was a good save, don't get me wrong, by Gerald Kelly. But he gave the keeper a chance. He gave him a chance. He didn't give him as much of a chance as at least it hit the ground. It, it made it more difficult to save, I would say. Um, and Cunning was struggling early doors with Keane Mahoney. He, Matney, I thought, did really well for about 35, 40 minutes. Uh, but it just, it, I actually remember looking at it at one stage. Cunning got a lovely point in the second half. Like they were after, he was after running the legs off Mahoney. He was after go, sprinting from one wing to the other. And the ball coming in, I think, was a lovely diagonal ball. And they were really good at giving in diagonal ball. Keila Malai gave some lovely diagonal ball across. Uh, and Cunning got on top. And then he got in for a goal chance. Uh, it was saved, and he put a point over the bar then. Um, but it was one ten to 7. Then Thomas has hit the next four points after the goal. It was two points in it. And then I think Dunlai hit the next three. And, you know, to be fair, Shane, yeah, they were, both sides were really wasteful. I think they both had 15 wides each. But um, Thomas has probably panicked a small bit, I would say. Well, Maybe not right early at the end. Ah, yeah, and trying to force the thing. Like, you know, when there's six or seven minutes left, it's very easy. Like, you can hit six or seven points. You can hit one a minute easy enough if you just keep tipping away. But they were kind of forcing the issue. Uh, Connor Cooney had a free saved. I think the keeper saved it. And then Aina Burke, who was, you know, yeah. unusually unusually quiet yesterday, had, a you know, a, an effort scrambled out by, I think, two defenders. But there was probably an element of panic. And even in that third quarter, Thomas's were taking on shots from everywhere and they just couldn't go over, but they were taking them on from particularly far out the field. And I have to say, I thought it was peculiar. Mark Colfey took two shots at goal yesterday, I think, and the boat went over and he was pulled off in the 52nd minute for an injured man to come in for him. When he was put, like he could score, like no one else could score. He was the, him and Damien McLean were their highest scorers from play. I think Connor Cooney might have got two as well. But I, I just thought it was a surprising. The one man that could score from distance on a day when they were really struggling was pulled off at the end. I, I found that peculiar. Even, you know, as big as he is, he could have went in at the edge of the square yesterday. Do you know what I mean? If they were looking for a different type of threat. I just thought it was unusual that they took him off at that stage. Yeah, even like, so Damon McGlynn was very good and he got a couple of scores. Yeah. I even thought Victor Manzo was a little bit unlucky to be taken off because they were going long ball after long ball inside, which obviously doesn't cater to his type of game. And he, like with his athleticism and speed, you would think that over the course of the game, he's going to do something in Croke Park. So but that was a little little bit harsh. But look, it's easy to be the, you know, wise after the event. But they were throwing Gosh, everything. Shane, we're, all, we're always wise after the event. The Monday morning quarterback, aren't we? You know like, it. <laughs> six missed chances at the start of the second half. You know, it was it was level six points apiece at halftime. By the way, did, like, so there was, I have 30 scoring chances down for the first half. Six points apiece. So obviously 12 out of 30 scored. Did you find that first half enjoyable or did you think it was a bit of a bore? I, I actually enjoyed it. Nah, I enjoyed it more. It was, no. a, t- it was a tough, it was a tough old watch. Chess though, I find. There was a lot, yeah, there was a, there was a lot of mistakes. Just from a Thomas's point of view as well, Thomas's went from the 16th minute to the 48th minute without getting a score from play. It was Caulfield's first point and his second point. That's why I find it uh, bewildering that he was taken off. Like you know, and it just they really, really struggled from from play there. I think Davy Burke had three really bad wides within within that period as well. Um, but they were shooting from. You know, they were shooting from very far out and a good few of them from the sidelines as well. Um, and as Huey Paddy says there, Dunlai were full, full value for their win. They were the better team nearly throughout and overcame the fact that they probably should have been up by two or three at half time realistically, having bossed that second quarter. But um, 
Yeah, no, I thought it was a brilliant performance from Dunloy. All over the pitch, they, the defence was so solid. And I know uh, Eamon Smith, the wing-back, would have been disappointed with some of his efforts from distance. He got a great score at the end. Nigel Elliott's catch for the goal as well. Oh. Uh, and just a lovely little pop pass to Malai, who was running. Like, I, I can't say enough how good of a goal I thought that was. Because it was just... He was going to be absolutely. You know, he's going to be. Dri- he's going to be driven into the middle of next week. He flicks the ball on and stays going. And unlike Adrian Mullen, the two times he took goal, goal ch- shots yesterday, like he walked it into six yards out. Do you know what I mean? He walked it in. It was going to be so difficult for them to save it. And uh, yeah, it's great they're back in their back in their fifth All Ireland final now. And similar to the other ones, they've been. They're going to be heavy underdogs again. So is this the last podcast with Michael Verdi before Christmas? Do you know what? I'm why, thinking... Why Verdi? <laughs> <laughs> the father I often refers to as Verdi, actually. He's probably watching there now, but yeah, it's not Verdi. Although I enjoy when you say Verdi. I've got uh, Varney, Varley, Verdi, Verdi. Um, you name it, I've got it. And the best one is when some people, a particular, uh, particular group of people, don't pronounce my name with a V at all. They call me Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, not bad. So I, I'm just thinking there, Thursday's show, so obviously there's no games to preview this coming weekend, only Christmas. I'm thinking maybe we do a watch-along of what we might consider to be the best game of the year. And um, Daryl Flynn, who helps us uh, preparing the show, he was suggesting maybe if we did a watch-along of the Munster Hurling final and you know, people send in their comments and we give our spakes as the game is going on. Yeah, that'd be um, that'd be a fair show now. It's either that. It's either you listen. Put up a poll. You tell us. We do a watch along with the Munster final or a twenty twenty two season in review. Uh, best goal, you know, team of the year, manager of the year, score of the year. Um, you we'll give. We could do we'll that. We could do that as we're as we're as we're doing the watch along. We could kind of do a bit of that. Too much going on in the Munster final. We will not be able to do that. John Keenan didn't even see the incidents where two lads nearly killed two lads because there was that much going on in the game. And you're saying that we're going to get in all this other stuff in between. I highly doubt it. Jack Nulty says 2022 review. Keep the comments coming in and let us know if the rest of you agree. Park Grace, happy Christmas, lads. Looking forward to number 37 next year. Not a hope, Park. Will you go away or that? There's no chance. It's going to be tips here. Everyone knows that. And, I thought uh, he meant number 37 as in he's going to be 37 years old next year, which I will be. So yeah. No, that's the that's the Kilkenny colours there. He's looking for All-Ireland number 37. Uh, whereas I think it's going to be the eight in a row from Kilkenny next year, eight in a row without an All-Ireland. Uh, <laughs> what about the Conor Cooney foul, lads? Just a yellow. So that was a brilliant one-two between Shan Elliott and Decky Smith. And Shan Elliott got in. He was looked like he was pretty much destined to score. That was in the 18th minute. And it was one of the all-time rugby tackles. I thought he was going to sort of go over the player separation and then go in for the, the old ruck, ruck ball or whatever. But um, like if you if you wanted a black card, I mean, that was a black card really, wasn't it? But again, it pays to foul. And, and until well, it yeah. doesn't pay, people will keep doing it. Well, just if you bring up that comment again from the viewer, Shane, right? So he says, it only been a yellow. Like the crowd would go mad. And John Collins says, what about the Conor Cooney foul? Out? Just a yellow. The crowd will go mad because, you know, they think it's a, you know, a sackable offence or whatever, or that he should go. But that's totally within the rules, and lads are playing Ooh. within the rules. When Shane O'Sullivan hacked down TJ, it was only going to be a yellow. Funnily enough, um, when uh, Philip Mahoney uh, took down, who did he take down? Was it Colin? Uh, I don't think that was as cynical, but he was on a yellow at that stage. He was probably lucky to stay on the pitch because he you know, gave away a penalty or whatever. But we're actually encouraged. Like, I'm not a big fan of the black card or whatever, and I, I'm not a, bit, not a big fan of... Like, the black card's not implemented at county level, by the way, in Hurling. There's no point in saying any different. It's not. But at club level, lads are really going to town on these, like, last-ditch tackles and just hauling boys down. And the fact of the matter is, Conor Cooney took a yellow card, no problem yesterday. They avoided conceding a goal. And that could have been the difference maker at the end of the game. So there was essentially, take his yellow card out of the equation, there was zero punishment for denying what was almost a certain goal. Are, you know, ask lads, are they going to do it or not? Of course they're going to do it. Until the sanction is something that, like, I put it to you this way. If the penalty is saved, but Collar Cooney is in the box for 10 minutes and they're down to 14, then that's a different scenario altogether. Then that is a case where your team could be hit with a barrage within that 10 minutes when they're down to 14 men. Whereas at the moment, like the punishment does just does not fit the crime. No way. 
Yeah, John Collins says, it is within the rules, but if Connor knew he'd be sent off, he wouldn't have done it, and we'd have seen a great goal from play. That is the one thing. We were denied an unbelievable goal, and uh, a good just comment. Just on that, Shane, as well. Someone said, someone, I was listening to, somebody was talking last night about uh, Keelan Malai, and they said, you know, if there was more, if Thomas's had been more cynical, we would have never got to see that goal. So, yeah. like, it is, like, it is a pity that a lot of the time we are being denied probably a lot of great goals because lads are just putting their arms around them or whatever. Uh, Richard Hogan just says there about uh, John Keenan maybe not covering himself in glory. Thought Dara Burke was very lucky to stay on the pitch. He was only on the pitch a minute and he kind of dunted a lad. I, I, listen, I, I thought... You know me. Pretty, yeah, do you know what as well, Shane? I, thought, I didn't think it was smart from the point of view of Thomas is after hitting four in a row. Dunlai man is down for a minute, 90 seconds. You know, yeah, it was almost like me- momentum sucked. And then all of a sudden, Dunlai gets the next three points. So it wasn't a smart thing to do at all. So there are a couple of other people saying they want to watch along. That's Niall Heffernan. Um, season review is what Cash is King is, and Cash is King is saying. All Ireland minor final watch yeah, along. Yeah, I saw that. I saw yeah, that comment. And yeah. then, uh, I was Parik Grace is biting back at me to kick any man. The tip season highlights would be a good. A fairly review. short show, I tell you that. A fairly <laughs> short show. <laughs> well, it, it would actually be the minor watch along, really, wouldn't it? That'd be that'd, much, be, yeah. that'd be about the height of it. Um, will we move on? Have we at all said about Dunloy against St Thomas's? Do you reckon? I think so. Yeah. Um, just a, a great a great day for Dunloy. You'd have to say. Um, another upset. They've been. I think they've been underdogs in the the four previous semi finals that they've won. I think they were four to one underdogs yesterday. Um. I think Thomas's. It looked like they thought it was all just going to come good for them, but it just it built up and th- Dunloy started believing more and more the longer it went on. And uh, you have to say they were they were very very deserving winners. Yeah, and even there was a couple of sixty fives in the first half that Dunloy definitely should have had. I I would have thought anyway. I'm sure you you probably feel the same about it as well. Uh, well, let's talk about Mona Lean getting to the All Ireland final. They beat Bray Emmett's two nineteen to twenty points in O'Connor Park. Teams were uh, level, I think, 11 times. And then late goals from Andrew Latouche Cosgrave and Dan Power, they were massive. Uh, Wicklow sharpshooter Christy Moorhouse, who you've mentioned many times, he scored 13 points. But that's huge for Mona Lean to get to the All-Ireland. And they're going to be joined by Turin of Mayo, who beat Leitrim of Down. And that's that's a fairly novel final, isn't it? A, a Limerick team, sorry, against a Mayo team. Yeah, well, in the senior final, you have, obviously, a Kilkenny team against an Antrim team. An Antrim team getting into an All-Ireland final is, you know, it's not unbelievably novel, but it's not the most common thing. In the intermediate final, you have a Mayo team playing an All-Ireland final, which is pretty novel. And in the junior final, you have a Sligo team playing the final, which is very, very novel. So it's great to, it's great to see three counties, maybe, that aren't that familiar with finals, being in finals. But um, these were two really, really... Dogged games. Uh, Bray were up at half time. Uh, Moline hit two late enough goals. Latouche Cosgrave, who's been, you know, really been riddled with injuries in the last while, he actually went under the knife in April, I think, for an Achilles tendon injury that's really bugged him the last couple of years. He only got back fit around the county semi final stage and he's getting games under his belt now. And uh, he looks like he's getting better and better again. And uh, he'll be he'll be hard stop in the final. And they obviously were relegated from senior last year in Limerick. And I said it on Thursday's show, there was actually a hurling committee set up. Six lads that weren't even on the executive committee of Moline came together, did one-on-one interviews with every player, asked them what they, ne- what they needed, what was going wrong. They did an eight, the, the six-man uh, hurling committee uh, set up an eight-week gym program for all the lads who a month after being relegated were back in the gym for eight weeks before Ombres Lan was even you know given the manager's job. And then they started training in January themselves. and. Owen brought in his whole team. They're actually all tip, uh, SNC goalkeeping coach, uh, and the two selectors, and then Brazan as manager. And listen, they've bounced straight back up the senior ranks, and they could be going up to the senior ranks as All Ireland winners as well. Yeah, because uh, myself and Shane Brophy interviewed um, Owen Brazan on Tipcast a couple of weeks ago after they beat um, Ross Gray in the Munster final. He was talking about how. There's, there's like he was talking about one or two of the players saying these lads have to be called up for Limerick. Like there's brilliant quality players there. He said there's players across Limerick that people haven't heard of yet that are of serious quality. And the other thing is he was talking about the intelligence of them. They're a very young uh, team, but so many of them are high achieving and you know in college and doing this, that, and the other as well. So he was very effusive in his praise of them. Um, is this the beginning of the end for St Thomas's? Do you think? Well. Obviously, the five in a row champions in Galway, so they're they're not going anywhere in Galway whatsoever. 
But if you think of it, since they won the All Ireland back in is it twenty twelve or thirteen that they beat Kilcormick? Thirteen. 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 Yeah. So they've won the uh, Galway Championship, I think, six times since then. Once was a COVID year, so there was no All Ireland Championship. But I think they've only won one match um, since then. They've only won one of the All Ireland semi finals. So their record isn't great. That was against Cushendall, I think, in 2019. But they've lost to Ballier, they've lost to Burris Lee, now they've lost to Dunloy. When they got to the final, they got absolutely destroyed by Ballyhale. And obviously, they were robbed by Ballyhale last year. So that are we nearly going on that performance to suggest? hey, look, they're still up there with the top dogs. Or are we thinking realistically they get that leg up getting straight into an All-Ireland semi-final and it's a false reflection of where they're at? Yeah, I was just really disappointed yesterday. Like They really should have been kicking on. Um, they really should have been kicking on yesterday. And they just, I don't know, they, they were a bit rudder, rudderless all around the field. Like they didn't, I don't know, I was expecting different lads to stand up on different occasions and it, and it just didn't happen. Um They've obviously it's been tight margins in Galway the last what is it the last four years maybe we've been maybe we've been blowing them up too much but it just was kind of basing a lot of it on that Ballyhale performance last February and maybe that you know that performance was based a lot on hurt on that All Ireland final hammering that they got a couple of years ago but like Dave Davy Burke's going to be a year older next year Connor Cooney obviously they're both going to probably still be playing at Galway but they've a fair bit of mileage on the, on the clock as well so. Listen, and maybe they'll say that there was injuries kind of mixed in with it as well, but um, whether they're going to get better at this stage or not, I don't know. I don't. Mm. I prob- probably not. Probably not. You're writing them off again. Yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> Black White 85 says, is their dominance in Galway as much a reflection of a drop in standards of the top teams there than their own brilliance? I mean, I mean, we'll be very interested to see in the next year or two if the likes of Lock Ray can kick on and maybe if there'll be more out of Turlock Moore. Richard Hogan says, Bray were really unfortunate. This is obviously against Mona Lean. Got back level after the first goal, but got suckered with the second one. The life for Owen Burstan, really good guy and must be a very good coach as well. John Quan says, Bally Hale, Mona Lean and Bally Giblin to win respective All-Ireland club titles. Is that too obvious? Yeah. Um, Richard also says, uh, Bally Giblin seemed to be really comfortable in their semi-final against Horswood. And last year's experience should stand them in good stead. So let's just reflect on those scorelines. Bally Giblin beat Horswood 112 to 8 points. Uh, Dara Flynn, who's a really good under-20 hurler with Cork. I think, uh, is it one or two uh, All-Ireland under-20 titles he won with them? I'm not entirely sure. It's, it's one or the other anyway. But um, he was very good. And, of course, I think um, Horswood played with an extra man back and it allowed Mark Keane basically to run of the field. And then there was this great score from Cahal O'Mahony, which, uh, which we put up. I'll just bring it up on screen here. Best in. Give it across. <laughs> Cahal O'Mahony now. Oh, lovely stuff. Oh, unbelievable oh, skill by O'Mahony. Can he drive it over? It's a be unreal point by Mahony. Over the bar. Over the bar. And the look of drop of the shoulder as well was lovely, wasn't it? After he did the flick up. Yeah, yeah. We I think we brought up a score he got uh, in the county final a while back as well. Yeah, he's a he's a very good footballer, but he's a fairly nifty hurler as well. Um it's gas. Buff got his name right in fairness to him because the amount of name, like I think he's nearly doing it as a, like a little in joke. He like he'd be Heenahan would be would be some other name, he'd be calling, you know, beast things obviously as well. Um but that yeah, fine score. Just something I wanted to bring up, Shane. Um comment in here from Dave Bryan, uh, who's Associate with the Bray Emmett Club, originally from Bury. Just a big shout out to Paul Carley and his uh, Bray Emmett charges. Put it up to Moline, but two last uh, two goals in the last seven minutes. Seven minutes. Someone good for Limerick men. Christy Morris with fourteen score out of Bray's total of twenty. A brilliant year for Bray, uh, and nothing will be taken away from them uh, losing to Moline yesterday. That game for the bits I saw was a really really high standard as well. Uh, and just on the other commenter there, yeah, like realistically, Bally Hale, Bally Giblin. And uh, Bally Hale, Bally Giblin, and Moline will all be favourites going into the, the their respective finals. If there was going to be an upset, I'd say Torine is the most likely of the two to be an upset. Torine against Moline. Um, uh, but uh, like Bally Hale will be raging fa- hot favourites, and so will Bally Giblin as well. If Tareen win that All Ireland final, there surely be a big call to reinstate the Connacht Championship, even if it's just a final between the Galway champions and whoever comes out of Mayo. Maybe that's contingent on Turin continuing to dominate, but they're, they're a good team and they've had some good scalps, so you know, it wouldn't be beyond the realms of possibility. And uh, meeting Bally Giblin in the final will be Eski of Sligo, who beat Kilburn Gales, uh, obviously coming over from, from Britain there. Uh, 2 9 for Andrew Kilcullen was a very, very big uh, factor in their victory there up in Darver in County Loud. 
Um, I think two of the goals came from uh, that um, that Kilburn got came from Marco Dwyer. You obviously have um, some Burr compatriots that are involved with Kilburn, do you? Or a Vider on club? Uh, no, 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 no Burr lads. Uh, Patrick Early, the journalist, actually was uh, he was playing midfield for Kilburn. Uh, I'd say they're disappointed because I'd say they would have expected to come through here. Um, they were in an All Ireland Intermediate Final. Uh, Kilburn Gales were I'm going to say about seven or eight years ago. And they dropping down a tier and competing at junior level. Um, I'd say they would have expected to come through here, but uh, Andrew Kilcullen's a brilliant forward. He was on the the Ring Racker Cup team of the year earlier on in this year. Um, and listen, it's a, like a couple of years ago, Sligo were in Division Three B of the National Hurling League, which is what are we talking? Is that the sixth tier of league hurling? They've climbed up to I think two B now, and they're obviously you know quite competitive at Christie Ring Cup level as well. Uh, and this is another sign of uh, this is another sign of things turning around in Sligo. I think um, I think uh, Eski is like a surfing town, but the, whatever they've done with hurling there in the last ten years, it's been a remarkable turnaround. And again, I'd say it again: when Sean Kelly introduced these competitions, the intermediate and junior level, you know, provincial and all Ireland championships, for a Sligo team to be playing in Crow Park at this level. Uh, at club level, like it's absolutely fantastic. It's one of the, it's been one of the great developments, I would say, in GA in the last fifteen or twenty years. Yeah, the uh, All Ireland Camogie Club final was on on Saturday at Croke Park. Sarsfields of Galway beat Lockheel Shamrocks two fourteen to one fourteen, and that was retaining the title, of course. And uh, three in the last four years, the McGrath sisters, as you can imagine, were brilliant. Uh, Siobhan McGrath had a goal, I think, scored after about twenty seconds, thirty seconds, something like that. Nice finish after. I suppose Lockheel probably should have cleared it, and maybe there was a little bit of nerves from Lockheel. It's been so long that they were trying to dethrone Schlock Neil up in Ulster. Finally, did it. They were very good against Drum and Inch, even though they only won by I think it was a goal. They definitely uh, controlled much of that game. But when they got going, they actually looked very good. Katrina Dobbin scored one one. Probably needed to get more ball into her. Roshi McCormick. I mean. What a brilliant, brilliant first touch she has. Absolutely class. Uh, Annie Lynn scored a couple of points. But again, I was thinking need to get more uh, ball into her. But Neve McGraw was very good. Like Sarah Spellman, um, I think she came off the bench, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Because the, the, the centre-back had to go off. Just the name escapes me off the top of my head. But, um, you know, very important player to centre-back. She comes on and helps steady the ship. So um, another great win for Sarsfields there. Yeah, massive. Um, they've been beaten in a lot of finals up and like Owlert had beaten him, um Schlock Schlock Neil had beaten him in a couple of finals as well. Maria, Maria Cooney. Cooney is the, yeah, yeah. Like to, to have someone like Sarah Spellman coming off the bench who's obviously starting for Galway a lot of the time when fate was huge. Um yeah, it's just a big big win, big win for Sarsfields. They've kind of they've had to eke out a lot of their wins. The semi final against Vincent's was the same. I think there was a point in it. Um, but yeah, Neve McGrath midfield was, was brilliant again. It, Listen, after all the defeats that they've gone through, they're absolutely reaping their reaping their rewards now. And uh, yeah, I'm sure they're I'm sure they're, they're having they're having a good time there. The the men's team obviously won two All Irelands in the mid nineties that the Hopper was associated with, and now he's over the the Camogie team that's won back to back. Yeah, and uh, Clonduff are intermediate club Camogie champions. They beat James Stevens of Kilkenny twelve points to one six. So great for a down team to be coming out on top there. And um, I. Th- I think um, who did the score? And Sarah Louise Graffin, she um, she did plenty of the scoring in this game. Uh, so brilliant win for them. And then in the All Ireland Ladies Junior Football Championship Club final, Salt Hill knocked Nakara 1 7, Neva Bon 0 uh, 4. You might read out a small bit of the details on that. I surely will. Um, yeah, so I'm a small bit behind you. So I think this is this is brilliant. I, I hadn't realized this going into the game. So a Team USA Olympian. Was the goal scoring hero as Elisa Manley's 60 minute strike saw Salt Hill knock Nakara shake off the challenge of Neva Bond to win the All Ireland Junior title? Manley, who played for the American hockey team at the 2016 Rio Olympics, moved to Ireland with her Galwegian girlfriend in 2020 and took up Gaelic football last year. Uh, like, that's that is some story now, in fairness. Two years, uh, they're only in Ireland two years, she's only playing Gaelic football two years, and she's you know, goal scoring hero in an All Ireland club final, like an Olympian playing Gaelic football. Just like, wait, there's one for you. Has it like has it, has it, has that happened? Like, can you think of another Olympian that has played? Uh, definitely not played in an All Ireland final of any description. It, like, you'd, you'd go a while. Like, we don't have a soccer team or anything like that. There's not too many lads that would be going back 
playing a bit. Like Rob Carney going back playing with the Cooley Kickhams last mm. year would have been one high profile. One David Gillick went back playing with Ballantyre there a few years ago, didn't he? You're you're right, yeah, you're right. Actually, wonder any of the boxers. Me. Would any of the boxers gone back playing a bit of GA? Good question. Yeah, It'd be very interesting to, to see that. But it's a fascinating one. I wonder what the likes of Darren O'Neill, you know, the boxer from Kilkenny or or some. He of hurled a lot. Yeah, I played a league final against him. For Cairns, he was very he was real powerful midfielder, yeah. Matt Macklin did it the other way around. He used to play a bit of hurling underage with Tipperary when he came over from Birmingham. Just, that's not just it, yeah. But it's just like an Olympian winning winning an Ireland final. It doesn't it doesn't exactly happen every day of the week, it's fair to say. So are we gonna is Alyssa Manley in as a goat of the week? You know, obviously, as always, we haven't prepared our goats. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't. Found well, I, think goats. She, I think I think you'd be hard pressed to go against her. Uh, I tell you what, I give her the football one of the week. I think that was the only football game this weekend. Anyway, yeah. was it? Um, I'm going to give Keelan Malai the the goat of the week for for the hurling because I just like he obviously had a couple of wides or whatever, but that goal was absolutely fantastic. What about Joey the goal holding? There's your one. I know you want you don't like to give it to a, a Kilkenny man, but there, listen, you're after you have to get you're after suge- suggesting it yourself. So if you want to go that way, I'd be all for it. There's one for you actually. Richard Hogan just says Paul O'Donovan must surely have kicked a bit of football in West Cork. You just never know. Uh, and uh, part of Grace is Darren O'Neill has won one or two All Irelands with Kieran. He definitely has won. I think anyway, Richie Powers team that beat Rayfields from Loch Ray up in Parnell. I can remember it one year. He was a powerful midfielder. Uh, he ran through me one day, uh, and I was uh, in a in a league final. I can oh, remember. That's hard imagine, imagine running through one of his one of his right arm, right, or his right fist coming through your face, and tell you he'd get a fair land. I'm going to give it to Neve McGrath then for the uh, the Camogie side of things. You're happy enough so to go Niamh, with that. You, you went away with Joy Hall, and you just you won't give it to anyone anyone associated with Kenny. Someone had a comment in there saying I was in great form because the Kenny team won yesterday. Yeah, yeah, and they're dead right with that. Okay, so that's it from the show today. A reminder again that we're brought to you by OgreRetro.com. Use the promo code OurGame and you get 15% off. There's an unbelievable selection of jerseys there and what a Christmas present it makes. And 15% off, as we said, with the promo code OurGame. We'll be back on Thursday. Reply to us on Twitter, YouTube, whatever it is. Let us know. Do you want to do a watch-along, year in review, or a little bit of both? Michael, we'll do it again. Your poll up on our game. It's either a watch along, Munster final, or uh, a season in review. You tell us. You you do the poll. I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good luck, folks. Chat to you later. Yeah.